Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Public Coin, and today I have a uh, question from Justin uh, that I thought we could talk about. Ben, with such disparity in the two great, uh, two giant coin graders' opinions, which can amount to great deals of money at times, let's not forget Annex, poor guys. Wouldn't it be good for just one grading numismatic company? In my opinion, this is not a fair way to price coins. From buyers to sellers, correct me on my views so I can understand. Uh, again, another reason I choose bullion over numismatics. I love uh, coins and the history of them, but from buying and selling, it's all monkeyed up. Thanks for what you do. Great show. Peace. All right, Justin. Cool. So I'm going to attack, uh, I mean educate, uh, attack some of these concepts here uh, throughout the video. There's a lot of little points in here to, to talk about. It really has a lot, of, a lot of ups and downs in the comments that I think are really important for everyone to talk about. Uh, so, let's talk about it, shall we? When I look at the uh, history of grading, one of the things that really stands out to me is originally it was designed because there was some unfairness in the marketplace with uh, coin dealers uh, supposedly not being fair to coin buyers and uh, customers. Now, undoubtedly, this is true because human nature has never changed, right? So, because today, after four decades, basically, of coin grading, with two companies, uh, you know, 35 years of for each company now, uh, you're looking at a marketplace where people can still get hosed. That's right, very good. So, so the coin grading companies in and of themselves haven't stopped that from happening. Now, what it has done, in my opinion, is it has lowered the level of knowledge of the coin collecting community. This is the same thing that's happened since the introduction of calculators into middle school that uh, for all you who had to actually memorize your times table, and now you wonder why you can't get changed properly when you go to a restaurant or a store, this is all something that is um, pointed out one way or another in the book by Jonathan Haidt called The Coddling of the, Human, uh, Coddling of the American Mind. Pardon me. And this is true in life in general. This isn't a new concept, right? So it's a little bit like the old Chinese proverb of if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a man to fish, uh, he eats for a lifetime. So it's, it's kind of like one of the things that we like to do here, which is to go ahead and try to educate people uh, as we go along. Because, you know, uh, that that's the whole point of having a numismatic community to go into is the education portion. Because I don't want people who can't make change. I don't want to give a man a fish. I want everyone to know how to fish. So when you uh, are getting into coins and coin collecting, I want you to be able to uh, see things for yourself and understand things for yourself, which include, by the way, coins that are already graded. So yeah, you can have coins that are already graded and they don't all look the same, right? And, and they can actually be graded accurately and not look the same, you know? So, so this technology that we become reliant upon isn't always helpful, but most of you guys already know that I'm not the best when it comes to technology. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm kind of filming right now. The coins. Well, you know, they can wait. All right. Yeah, well, can I finish? Okay, yeah, I'll finish this, and then we'll take care of it. All right. All right. Thanks, Mr. President. All right. Bye. All right, so technology, me, we don't get along so well. Right, but but when you look at the technology that's coming to the coin community, you know, has it necessarily made things better for everybody? You know, and I understand where uh, where Justin's coming from with this whole one world government of coin grading, right? I mean, because what he's really asking for is consistency, right? And and so that's why some of you guys out there want the AI answer, the artificial intelligence, uh, which I still argue was an answer on probably modern coins that are straight out hot off the presses, but on older coins, I still don't think is the answer. Because whose who's operating system are you going to use? You know, whose eyes are going to be trained to? You know, there's, there's still going to be nuances that people are going to, going to argue about, right? So, but this is why CACs become so popular. Because people are like, well, you know, we've got this like one group of guys that are just going to make everything right for us. You know, and we're, we're, we're really going to love it, right? They're going to do an awesome job. So, uh, but, but really, generally speaking in life, you know, competition is good. So, you know, he points out Annex, and, and a lot of you guys have pointed out Annex. 
and you want more competition, which generally I think is true, you want more competition. You know, uh, with that business model, though, the idea that the more competition we have is the better. Uh, you know, is, aren't aren't we? You know, I make fun a little bit about the sticker thing, right, with CAC and whatnot. But the reality is, don't we need multiple companies doing the same thing? First of all, CAC can't keep up, and it looks like they're not going to expand their business model. So, shouldn't there be other companies in the mix? You know, putting their owl sticker on stuff. I mean, isn't that really what the marketplace? could use um, you know is that a, really a solution I don't know I don't know what the solution is for some of that stuff but all I'm saying is that you know having having multiple companies in the marketplace usually gets you a result that is a good result for everybody but what I really want to see from everyone who's watching a video like this is that you take the time to learn how to grade coins and learn how to look at coins that are already graded to see which coins look nice and which coins don't look nice right so this is something that you can learn to do by going to coin shows and coin shops and seeing lots of different coins. You know, but I, I definitely think that we rely a lot on Annex, on PCGS, on NGC when we shouldn't. I mean, when I say I mean that collectively as collectors, like we really should know better um, how to grade coins and how to how to understand what we're looking at. Uh, I think I think a couple of the things that I want to point out here just in Justin's comments are one of the reasons it's a big deal, he's talking about the business model of coin collecting, right? And what I want to get at is, Justin, you said to set you straight on a couple things here. I understand what you mean when you look at coins. It's like, well, in this grade, it's $100, but in that grade, it's $200. But the reality is that most coins, it's not a huge difference in price from one grade to the next. I mean, all coins have a huge jump somewhere, right? But this is a this is a collecting practice that I tell people, buy before the jump, right? What that means is if a coin is $100.64 and then two or 365, buy the four, right? And some Mercury Dimes, they don't jump in price till 67. So buy a nice 66, MS 60, you know, like, and don't worry about, don't worry about whether you made the right decision or not when it comes to that type of thing. If you're buying before the jump, then you don't have to think like, oh no, is someone else not going to like this coin that I just spent a lot of money on, right? Another thing is we really get caught up about price and price points on stuff. And really it's still about the collecting, the fun and the hobby, especially if you like ancient coins or just the history. The, the, there are hundreds of thousands or millions of coins you can collect that are inexpensive, that are fun to collect. And if you really don't like the grading game, you can buy raw coins, you know, that are also inexpensive. Yes, there are coins that when you look at it, you'll see like this coin's from the 1950s and it's MS69 and, and all of a sudden guys are paying $10,000 for them at auction. But is that really what we're talking about? And for me and you and 98% of the people who watch these videos, that's probably not the game that they're playing. That's probably not the, the pool that they're swimming in, so to speak, right? So really, it doesn't matter as much as we talk about it mattering. Really... Most coins, the grading and the price point aren't really as subjective as people think they are, right? Because most coins, it's not like that coin that's really just a 63 or 64, could have been a 65 or 66, so that's not really what we're talking about. And the grading companies, their grading disparities, I, I would tend to agree lately haven't, I don't think they're having the best quality that they've had over the last year or so, but at the same time, we're really not seeing huge mistakes on the majority of coins, right? Now, if that becomes more consistent as a community, we're going to have to call that out. And I know a lot of people say that on, on YouTube and stuff, and they want to make a big deal out of it. But in my opinion, it's still not that big of a deal. I mean, it hasn't been that big of a disparity. Let me, let me put it that way, right? All right, so I want you guys to learn, and I want you guys to be able to be confident in the things that you buy. Uh, and, and really, well, one of the reasons CAC, the little sticker companies, become so popular is because people want that consistency that, that you see that they've provided, uh, you know, that people have perceived that they provided in the marketplace, right? Um, um, so anyway, I am, I am not in favor of a, a one-world order of grading, so to speak. I'm not in favor of artificial intelligence taking over. I'm in favor of you, the collector, learning 
how to grade coins for yourself, how to spot quality coins for yourself. And that's, that's what I'm really in favor of. You and I don't really control entirely how NGC or Annex or PCGS business models end up. Not exactly. Now, now unless collectively we all just decide we're not going to buy their coins anymore, and then that, that would affect the marketplace. But I don't really think that's realistic. So, you know, that's just kind of uh, pie in the sky. So anyway, let me know, guys, what you think about uh, how many grading companies we should or shouldn't have and uh, where this is all going to lead in the marketplace. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.